Hey everybody, today we're going to be using the auto sampler in main stage to create a version of one of our iOS instruments. That way we can actually use that in any of our logic projects or even in main stage, they work in both of them. So we're using the IDAM protocol for this, which means if I want to get this up, we got to go to our audio MIDI setup. And in here, I just have my phone plugged in right now to my computer. That's it. But I'm going to click the enable button here and this will turn on the IDAM. And let's also show MIDI Studio just so you can see. Yeah, it's right here. So this is my phone. It is online. Perfect. We're going to leave this just running in the background for the moment. In here it says, do you want to use the audio device iPhone? We're going to click on use. It's not a two way street. So it's smart enough in here to know that I still want to use the other built in output right now. So built in output is still happening. The audio input is the iPhone. I think we're good to go. So I've got an empty project here in main stage. And what I want to do now is make the connection between the phone, which is running this DX7 clone app. It's exactly like the DX7 from Yamaha. Uh, you can even run presets and things from that instrument on here. We'll maybe look at that a little bit later. But I want to come in here to main stage. We're going to do external MIDI. Now, this is really an external instrument. It's just listed here as external MIDI. And down here, the input one and two, because the input is set to the iPhone, that's the iPhone. The output, and this is for MIDI output, is set to iPhone channels one through 16. That's fine. And then the audio output is set into the just default output, which is our built-in output. So we have those three things right now connected. So we're going to hit create. And now, I'm not sure what you're hearing. I've got a lot of things connected all at once, but you can see signal and I'm playing on my Axiom keyboard. So I've got signal now coming from MIDI, my MIDI controller into main stage. That MIDI is then going through to the iPhone. The audio from the iPhone is now coming back. And you can see that there's no other instruments loaded there. And the only thing that's connected is my phone. Next, I want to come here into our audio effects down to main stage. It might be under, it's under utility. It's under both places. Utility, auto sampler, stereo. And this loads up this screen right here. But this now it's going through from this interface to the iPhone. The audio is coming back. You can see it down here. Now we have a bunch of different parameters here. I'm going to leave the, the key range where it is. Yeah, so it's about the range of my keyboard right here. I can go further if I wanted to. But there's the start and end of the range. We're going to do less in terms of how many get sampled. I want to do every three semitones right now. That way it's not an intense instrument with every note, but it's still pretty close. I'm going to do round robin for two, just because I do think... No, I think we're not going to do any for this particular instrument. I don't think there's enough variation from note to note. Sustain. We could probably do a little bit less on this. I'm just listening to it. So let's do five seconds on that. Or 4.9 is fine. And then velocity layers. I definitely want to have at least four or five velocity layers. That will give us some of the cool change in the sound as you play the note louder. I'm going to leave the response as linear for now. Although if you're not happy with it, you can try some of the nonlinear options. 
I definitely want to have uh, an auto loop on this so that you can sustain, even though it's pretty soft there. Uh, we're going to do just search with a crossfade. I don't think I need a really fancy one. There are fancier options with a Penrose machine, but we're not going to do that. And then I think the auto loop start is fine as these defaults for the first try. We're not going to do one shot. I definitely want to have it looped out. Now I've got all of the settings here. We're going to push sample and then it's actually going to create the instrument. So I'm going to pause the video while I do this and then I'll come back and show you the end result. Okay, so now that just finished. It took about 10 minutes to sample that instrument based on the settings we had chosen. And I just loaded up Logic. I haven't done anything else. I haven't tweaked anything or moved anything. I'm gonna load up the EXS24 sampler. This is what those files are used in as a default. Over on the left, you'll see GarageBand Factory and Auto Sampled. So now that I've done that, it put it in the auto sampled folder. I gave it the name KQ Dixie, which is the name of the app. I'm going to load it up. And I'm going to play it just a little bit. Let me move my keyboard here so I can get a better angle. And here's the instrument on my phone. Now on the screen, I'm not getting any touch sensitivity, velocity sensitivity, I should say. on my MIDI keyboard. So I now have this instrument off of my phone into my computer. I can use it in Logic in any of my projects. Now I can use it here inside the EXS24, or I could also, let's do this, let's load up Alchemy. And we'll do initialize preset under one of these, let's see, let's do import audio and we may have to find this in a second. So let's see, users, Sam McGuire, music, audio music apps, Sampler instruments, auto sampled, and here's that one. So we're going to do unlimited for the entire instrument. We could either do it as a sampler or we could actually do it in one of the analysis modes. Let's just do it as the plain old sampler for a moment and we'll import this. So you can see I can load this into Alchemy as well, not just leave it inside the EXS24. The benefit of that, of course, is that Alchemy can do so much more than the EXS24 can, especially with all the synthesis tools. But now we've got this. Okay, that's a great way to look at this. Here's the instrument itself that we just made. All the different velocity layers and the different notes. Great tool. Okay, so hopefully this is useful for you to see how you can use IDAM with the auto sampler, with the EXS24 and Alchemy to really create some cool versions of your iOS instruments.